everyone, Arxy here. Welcome along to another video for Farming Simulator 25. We are taking a look here at a brand new mod for Farming Simulator 25. In fact, it's a mod which is still in development. It is called Enhanced Vehicle, and it was a mod available for FS22 previously. Um, and the modder has managed to bring this through and already has it working, and working reasonably well from the little bit of testing I've done with it so far. But this is the first mod for FS25 which brings GPS uh, guidance steering into the game other than of course the AI worker that is built in and the global uh, the steering settings um, steering assist which is built into FS25 so it's fantastic to have one of this have something like this already released of course some of the other popular versions for this in FS22 were of course of course the guidance steering by Wapster and the vehicle control add-on as well an enhanced vehicle was one of the other options which could be used so like I said great to have this already in the game and able to be used now we're going to go through it very quickly have a bit of an explanation about how it works um, there's some really useful information information on the github um, now it is zool z-h-o-o-l or he also has a website mayo76.de where you can find this and i'll have links for both of those down in the description like i said it is still a work in progress it's not the final version um, there'll be teething issues there will be bugs there will be issues which need to be resolved but i have tested some things out and uh, it seems to work really really well already so let's jump up here into the challenger we've got that set up with the field cultivator on behind we've also got the massey over there in the background you can see set up with uh, ready to go and harvest the field of wheat so I thought we'd try it out here um, with the tractor and also try it out in the combine so let's jump up in the seat have a look at what's involved so we've hopped up here into the tractor and the biggest changes you see will be to the HUD now up in the top right hand corner we've got some information detailing the level of damage uh, and the quality of the paint on the tractor we've also got the current fuel level and the fuel we're using per hour the liters per hour now if we just go forward a little bit you can see our usage of fuel goes up so we're just sitting there idle using 4.8 liters per hour 454 liters in the fuel tank it's obviously full up so that's up there in the top right hand corner now we're going to move down into the bottom right hand corner um, just before I carry on there is a very very useful HUD explanation on the github so I'd suggest going along and having a look at that there's also some of the very useful key binds um, which will be good to know and good to understand but we'll take a look at those as well uh, and work our way through some of them uh, there's also a huge amount in the uh, controls once we go and look into the key ones here in the game that aren't explained on the um, github but i think we'll be able to figure those all out so moving down here in to the bottom uh, we've got the steering wheel and the track now the steering wheel is uh, whether the snap driving is enabled so whether you're enabled to drive in a direction that'll turn green when it's on it's in the gray mode at the moment because it's off um, and whether we're staying on track is enabled or not so again that will go gray or not um, up above that is the heading and i believe that is the heading that you're driving versus the heading that you're snapped to i'm not sure we're facing at one pretty much at zero at the moment um, see if we drive a little bit no that's not changing it does show in the hud so we'll just see if that changes uh, in that top middle square uh, it's the mod has a headland mode uh, and it'll tell you whether you have headland mode enabled or not obviously we've got it with no headland at the moment but you can set up the distance the headland is away uh, and whether you get a warning or not of that i'm assuming that will be an audible warning again we'll go in and take a look at that moving along to that second line where it says no track once we have a track set up that will tell us what number track we're currently on um, and how we're configured to be able to turn so we can automatically by pressing a button turn 180 degrees and pick up another track and you can tell it whether you want to turn immediately on yourself onto the next track whether you want to skip two three four five or however many tracks you want to skip as you turn so that will turn up there on the second line where it says no track uh, the 178.9 that is our current heading now as I noticed it's actually 180 degrees out from what the game one is so we just get there you know we're at 359.6 um, 0 180.0 so it's about 180 degrees out so I don't know if that is a little bug or not but uh, it's good to know bearing that in mind on the right hand side we've got our working width of the implement that is behind you so again once we've set up a track and established a track that will list the working width so a few other things that are added, uh, we've got the P there next to the speedo, that is whether you have a parking brake enabled or disabled, basically you enable that, you can't drive at all, you've got to disable it before you can. Next to that we've got the uh, what looks like the chassis of a vehicle, uh, the two green squares, we now have a diff lock enabled for the front and the rear of the tractor, so 
can turn that on or off if you'd like to. Uh, right down the very bottom we've got the weight of the vehicle and the weight of the vehicle including the implements. So the tractor itself is 10.3 tonnes with the cultivator on the back it is 13.4 total weight. Um, we've also got a lot more added up to the actual speedo so we've got an odometer you can switch between odometer and trip for that uh, we've got an engine temperature in the bottom right corner there sitting at 88 degrees at the moment we've got an engine rpm as well we're sitting at 849 850 rpm as we're currently sitting here um and I think that is pretty much the changes that we're seeing there on the HUD. So uh, a lot to get our head around, a lot to understand, but we will try and go into each of those as we progress. Uh, we're going to focus mainly on the snap assist, the track driving, um, the GPS for want of a better description. So we'll have a look at how that works and then expand maybe a little bit further into how the uh, auto turn works, how we can change the track width and also how the headland settings work. Now let's just go into the main settings because there is an option to have a look at that. In fact let's look at the keybinds first and then we'll go in and look at the configurable settings for the mod. Let's come into our game controls, we're going to go all the way down to the bottom, this is the only mod I've got installed so it's the only one that's changing anything in the game but you can see there um, we've got a huge amount of settings so uh, option there to apply and release the parking brake that's enter on my numpad so of course this does rely on a keyboard um, and a lot of the controls use the numpad or keypad settings so if you've got a uh, controller or sorry a keyboard that doesn't have a numpad on you might be a little bit stuck with that but just bear that in mind of course everything's configurable if you want to put it on your mouse if you want to put it on your controller um, of course keep an eye out I'm sure we will see some, some dashboard settings come through which could be used for this. Um, keep an eye out, the farm some guy might do something for that or someone else possibly so keep an eye out for those. But anyhow we can open up our config menu with the right control and the backslash on numpad. Um, just a whole lot of different things for calculating your working width, your track layout, you can sh slide the tracks left or right, you can increase the width or decrease them, you can move the lines, you can move the vehicle over one line left or right, you can tweak the headland modes, you can change your snap angles by uh, a degree, 45 degrees, 90 degrees. Um, you can turn the front axle lock on and off. Uh, you can both turn both differential locks on and off. That's not have a key bind with it at the moment. Um, you can change your wheel drive mode. So we didn't look at that, but you can change between two wheel drive and four wheel drive. Um, and then there's some rear hydra hydraulic settings as well as changing your mileage uh, or toggle the reset the mileage display mode whether it's showing your current mileage or your trip so a whole lot of settings in there that uh, it might take a little bit of getting used to um, but we'll go and take a look at those as we work our way through it so we're going to open up the config menu right control and numpad slash and uh, have a look at what we can set so just pressing those two keybinds, like I said, right control and numpad brings up our enhanced vehicle. Now we are currently sitting on version 1.1.0.0 and you can see there that is by Mayo76. So what can you turn on and off? Well we're going to scroll up here. Um, you can see there we can change our headland settings. Now this seems to be specific to the vehicle. It is telling me it is for the NT635. Um, what does it do on the headland? Well, it can turn around automatically, disables cruise control or does nothing so three different options there um, the headland distance you can use the working width so for our piece of equipment it wouldn't be very big um, or you can specify a number of meters before the end of the field and that will go right up to 20 meters so a few different options there for that you can also do it behind end of field so I'm guessing without playing with it whether that is to um, go after the end of the field so you know if you wanted to do something beyond the edge if you knew you had a big grass area to turn around on you might be able to do that uh, what the distance is to give you a warning um, you can specify how many meters away you are from the end that just goes in increments of 5 10 15 and 20 so those are the basic settings there for headlands we'll take a little bit more of a look into those once we've got our head around the actual steering assist or the guidance steering or whatever you want to go through and call that Next up here is our settings for the actual track itself so you can have it to show all the lines or none of the lines or the tracks only, the vehicle and working width only or have them all. I'm going to leave them on all at the moment just so it makes it more clear for us to see. Um, you can hide the lines automatically which I think is quite a cool mode actually I think that's quite cool that they will disappear after a period um, so we're going to leave that off for now but you can obviously specify your time, how many seconds after you've uh, turned your guidance on to hide those lines so if you want them on to be able to see or you want them turned off um, it's up to you. 
can adjust your snap angle from 1 up to 90 so I've got that set at 1 degree at the moment I just like that sort of fidelity that level of control and then the number of visible tracks uh, which is total so you've got your center track and this will always be in odd numbers so one will only show the center track and this will show how many total left or right so that'll be one left one right that'll be two left two right three left three right and so on so you can see your tracks that you're going to head down next and set that back to the default there of five we've then got a whole lot of things here for the hud settings so you can show whether you have the differential lock the parking brake the damage values i'm going to turn those off because i'm not too fascinated with those i'm going to turn the fuel ones off as well up in the top right corner just to demonstrate how those change whether you want the mileage counters whether you want the weight down the bottom i'm not too fussed about the weight so we might turn that one off as well um, and then we've just got some global settings so you can have parts of this or not so if we didn't want the improved hydraulic control I haven't looked into that in any detail so we might leave that turned off um, but otherwise we'll keep everything else running there uh, the main thing we're focusing on though is of course the track assistant so I'm going to come down here and press OK um, there is an option there that you can reload the mod configuration um, I'm assuming without doing that it's going to reset this all back to default um, I'm not sure what that one there does though uh, it's a red though I'm going to be careful and not press that it might require a little bit more research into what doing that will do but anyhow let's press OK so you can see now back in the tractor we don't have those boxes in the top right hand corner for our damage and fuel because we turned those off and we also don't have the weight down the bottom for the tractor because we turned those off but everything else is there and in front of us so let's take a look here at how we're going to set up for a snap angle and run this tractor through the field so we've just pressed the enter on our numpad and you can see the parking brake has turned red if we try and go forward it's going to tell us to release the parking brake first We'll just press that button and we can now go forward i'm just going to drive up get sort of set up here on the edge of the field now what we want to do is uh, basically right control and end key is going to set us up for our angle and you can see there it's actually pointing off at uh, a little bit of an angle we don't not kind of facing right down the edge of the field so we can go through and there was an option to increase our snap distance uh, snap track direction by one degrees and that's using right control and page up or page down so you can see our angle is changing on the tracker on the right hand side um, and I think if we just drive forward you can see there that's adjusted so that might have been too much let's go back a degree and see if that comes back to where we want it to be so as we drive along that seems to be tracking along pretty good um, maybe not quite where we wanted it to be well, there we go that might be a little bit better so 180 was correct it was just wasn't quite lined up where we wanted it to be so let's just run back down to the other end of the field and we'll get this set up and underway but you can see there uh, the steering wheel is yellow on the display because we're not snapped onto anything it is active though and we do have a track to follow so back here we're going to press control and end and you can see that has set us up with the green wheel and everything is all lined up so we lower our cultivator down we're going to run along here set our screws control turn that on and this should work pretty well run all the way down the field now it's actually snapped back to 181 now uh, we want it to be 180 i don't know why it changed there uh, whether that was a little bit of a bug because of where our last was but 180 seemed to be the sweet spot so we'll just get that changed around you can see it's flipped up there with our four meter uh, wide field width uh, or cultivator width that is the width of the cultivator and we were running there along now what we want to do is look at our track settings and see what we can do there with those so we've got to the end of the field like we said i'm just going to press our right control and two on our numpad and that will bring up the next lanes so we've got minus two minus one to our left and one and two to our right and you can see now that we've got the second line lit up with tracks um, and we've also got the snap to track enabled next to the steering wheel so previously we were basically just using guidance steering uh, where you could turn and enable it and disable it as you went this is actually going to set up and automatically turn to a certain number of lanes so at the moment it is set to turn from zero where you're currently in to lane number one by plus one uh, and which we end up in lane one obviously zero plus one is one now we can go through and change that so again right control and then the numpad four and six is going to increase that so at the moment if we were to turn we'd turn and skip two lanes and end up in lane number three now we're at the end of the field so what we can do is right control press home and that will automatically as we start moving forward that is automatically going to turn us it's going to take us across and snap back in to lane number three so we've skipped two lanes 
and got across into here. That's going to realign us on that lane and we can carry on heading down this way um, at 359 degrees. Again, it's got a degree off. Let's try and get that reset there. That way, so back to where we were. Once again, I'm still learning this and still understanding it and just trying to give you a general oversight. A little teething issue, I was just trying to figure out what was happening uh, because I've been adjusting the angle slightly when I get to the end. If I press the right control and home to turn, it's actually going to turn right going that way uh, rather than the other way. I was trying to figure out what it was, but it's because, uh, because of that angle. So as we were going up and down the other way, it wasn't quite turning the way. So if we just uh, bump that again, see it sets that back to track number zero now, and we're going to go up and turn right like we did previously. So just uh, I'm hoping that's just a little teething issue. Uh, if you wanted to adjust your track as you're moving, it's not quite going to work. But let's just get up to here. We're going to press right control and home. That's going to turn us back again on track number three. And we're going to head back down this way and now you can see that the track number is 3 plus 3 is 6 so when we get down to the other end here that should turn us uh, the basically what 180 degrees to turn back down to track number 6. Now I've got this set to have all lines on all the time they're not hiding we could change that and have those hidden but if we get to the top here we're getting those warnings beeped but there we go we're going to turn to the left this time and head on back down at track number six and it's going to basically continue doing this across the field skipping uh, two rows every time and we should be able to come back over and reset that on the next one uh, go down the right lane and restart doing all of that um, so there we go that's a very quick look at how this is all working um, a few other features that we can do in here um, is we're going to bring up the keybinds and just have a look at those so with our right control and insert we can press that and it's going to take us across one track to the right and now that's going to say if we wanted to turn now we're going to turn three across from seven into ten um, so we can go down and do this and we could do a uh, same button right control but delete should take us to the left so that is going to put us across into lane number 11 so there's a few different things that you can change there is a way to change the width of the track um, the angle of the track obviously we've already looked at that so there is a few different things the one thing it is missing and I haven't been able to figure out if it can is whether you can turn to the right at the moment it only turns to the left um, it would be good to go negative uh, way we can do that if we come in here and press control right control and our right control and four then we can see we're now turning to the right now unfortunately I did just reset that because I changed the page up and page down so this would turn the wrong way but um, by resetting that we have effectively changed it and we could go to the positive now by just having it set there as two so uh, if we did the right control in home it's going to turn us two lanes and go into lane number two so you have to adjust it a little bit um, and figure things out on the fly uh, like anything like this there's a lot of learning to go into it you can see there it's made lane number four green because that's the next one we're going to go into we couldn't see that before because we only had the five lanes showing not seven of them right so what we're going to do i think let's just turn at the end here and then i might try and set up some headland mode and see if it will turn automatically at the other end so coming back here into the menu we're going to turn around automatically uh, we're going to set a headland distance to maybe 10 meters before We'll sound the alarm at 20 so I think if we go okay there let's now have a look uh, we've got the headlanders showing up it's green it's saying at 10 meters it will start turning it's counting down how many meters there is to go our lane is going from four plus two to six so we're going to plan there's our 20 meter warning coming down now nine eight seven six five four three two one it is going to turn I'm not touching anything I'm holding down forward to make it go but I could completely put the cruise control on. Uh, we're sitting there at 40 miles per hour and curl 40 kilometers per hour in cruise control. Um, and this should carry on. It's now going to try and turn down lane number eight. If we wanted to make it turn down lane nine, I'm sure we could go control and six. Uh, right control and six on our numpad. And now it's looking for lane number nine. So um, it's pretty minimal input, really. This is screaming out for what a some dashboard uh, to be able to use this but look at that we are running down the field without having to do anything now I'm just going to stop the braking there uh, we're just going to stop bring up our settings once more I'm going to turn on and hide our lines I'm going to hide after three seconds um, and from there we might even bump this visible tracks down to one so we can only see the current one and let's just go again and once again this should turn three to the right which is probably too much we actually only want to go one to the right so we're going to make it go 
2 to the left, um, which means we need to go minus 2 and back into 7, and hopefully this is going to turn to the left and pick up that row that we haven't done yet. There we go, we're turning. A bit of a tight one. Um, but once again, I'm doing this all without any inputs apart from touching the uh, direction we want to turn. So it is all working out on its own. I want to turn to the left now instead of the right. So we want to go one, two, three, maybe four the other direction. So I'm going to make this go plus four to try and get back down that lane to our left, which hasn't been worked on yet. Let's just have a look. Got it turning the right direction. Is it going to turn back down the one I wanted it to? Ah, I picked the wrong number. Should have only been three. So there you go. There's a reason why you might want to have your lanes showing so you can make sure you're turning down the right ones. But um, that's a very quick look at some of the basic features for Enhanced Vehicle Mod by Zool or uh, Mayo76, um, depending whether you're referring to him on GitHub or through his uh, website and the name that he's got elsewhere. Um, a pretty cool mod. Great to have one of these already. Now, we will just have a quick look at a couple of other things. Uh, we did say about the um, diff lock. So using our right control, we've got seven. You can see that turns on and off the front diff lock. Eight, uh, nine, sorry, turns off and on the four-wheel drive. So the yellow little indicator there is going on and off. And eight turns off the other diff lock at the back. So some pretty cool little functionality there. So a lot to learn, a lot to figure out. Let's go and jump into the combine and give it a quick spin in there just see how it works. So once again, up here in the combine now, we're just going to run along the edge. Right control and end is going to turn our snap on. Now we only want to turn one lane to the right. So we're going to bring up uh, right control and two to bring out that setting. You can see we've now got zero plus one is one. So that would be to our right. So we're not quite running along quite the right track um, as we know it should be 180. So let's just bring that back to there. Uh, let's just press enter on that. There we go. Let's hit our 180. Um, and it's going to correct itself out. Now, when we get to the end, we're going to get the beep there for the headland warning. Um, we're just going to ignore the fact we haven't taken a headland off the field because obviously you would do that. And in fact, while we're doing this, let's look at how we can turn the track 90 degrees to be able to pick up across the headland on a field like this. So our right shift and page up is going to turn that 90 degrees. So there we go, that's gone to 270 now. And we're going to back up. You can see the track has reset across on the direction that we wanted it to be, which is uh, running across the headland. So we can come in here, control and E, uh, control and N, sorry, we'll pick up the track. Uh, and we can run down this way, and now I guess when we get to the other end, we can press that uh, right control and page down again. That should go another 90 degrees and get us to the 360 on the other side. So again, this is a feature that's been available in a number of different versions of uh, GPS guidance mods, um, being able to turn at the end. We must calculate it from one side, because obviously we haven't gone right hard against the field, but let's just try this as well, right control and that was shift, we're not pressing the right button, right, now shift and page, there we go, it's taken us 90 degrees the other way, once again, get ourselves lined up, cruise control on, control end, right control and end button, and that is going to take us back down this way, and we're not quite on the right angle, we want it to be on that 360, or zero, so that has got us set up and going in the right way. My question is, from here, our right-hand turn should be to the right because we've just reset our width, so uh, just be mindful of that as well as you're going. So it might be useful to have the lines up. Uh, it's personal preference, really, whether you want to use those or not. So you can see the tracks there showing as we go across them. Uh, we are counting in the upwards direction, so it's telling us 5, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. So that would get us all set up. I'm just going to head across, get back on to this other side. And we're just going to try what would happen when we go and do a three-point turn to turn around, particularly with something like a combine, where you might, might not want to be sitting um, or turning around and uh, running down some skip rows or anything like that, like we just said. So once again, control end. It's going to take us that way. Uh, I know we're on 13. 14 is going to be to our left, so we need to go negative on the shift. So we're going to do that one there. We're going to go from 13 minus 1 to 12, which should be... A button to the right. So we're getting to the end of the row here. Gonna stop, pick up our header, right control home. It's going to start our turn. 
Now I'm just trying to back up, and there we go, the wheels are automatically turning to get us lined back up there, so it will uh, change the direction the steering is to be able to adjust to the turn that you're trying to make. So if you want to do a three point like we just did, uh, we'll go through and adjust for that too. So that's good to know, very helpful. Uh, it's going to pick up the road that you want to be on. So um, there we go. I think that is about all we've got to look at for now on Enhanced Vehicle Mod. Uh, it's fantastic to have a mod like this already out for Farming Simulator 25. Like I've said a number of times, it is still in development. Uh, I'm sure there will still, will still be some bugs, such as uh, changing the pitch or the angle of the path while you're running, um, not ideal, but it is what it is, so just have to adapt to it. So there we go, Enhanced Vehicle Mod for Farming Simulator 25 by uh, Z Hall or Mayo76, uh, like I said, depending where you look at. Um, I've left some links down in the description to be able to download it from GitHub. Um, any bugs or issues, of course, always report there directly to the modder. It helps make the game a better experience, helps improve the quality of the mod. Um, you never know, you might be able to shape it by adding some suggestions for things to add into it as well. But there we go. Um, I hope you found that useful. I hope you found it informative. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.